Ever since Tokyo Bay streetwear brand Neighborhood's 2019 collaboration with Converse dropped, the widely known truth has continued to be even more unavoidable. And that is, Neighborhood slaps. And they've been slapping for quite some time now. Maybe it's because of the brand's roots in Japanese motorcycle subculture, or perhaps it's the creator, Shinsuke Takazawa's approach and appreciation to punk rock and American counterculture. Either way, Neighborhood is a brand that's definitely worth knowing about. But despite all this, the brand had virtually been unknown in the West for some time. For nearly two decades, non-stateside streetwear was basically a well-kept secret for those in the know. And the idea of two competing brands working together on a co-branded product, a la AKA collaboration, the way Japanese brands have been doing on a regular basis was basically unthinkable here in the States at that time. But that all changed, obviously. And the states were finally introduced to the wonders of brands like Neighborhood. But have you ever wondered how brands like this were able to get their start over there in the land of the rising sun? Let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the history of Shinsuke Takazawa and Neighborhood. But before we get started, as always, please stop for a second and smash that like button for your boy. Liking and sharing the video is the best way to help us to continue to grow as a channel. And I know I probably sound like a broken record for the people that watch my videos all of the time, but it really is true. But with all that being said, let's get right in. At 18, Shinsuke Takazawa moved to Tokyo, only to find himself in London by the time he turned 19, where he was introduced to new wave music. The prevalence of new wave and punk styles really fit in well with young Takazawa's anti-establishment attitude. And on a trip to London with friends at age 19, Takazawa ended up meeting with music producer Nelly Hooper and Milo Johnson of music collective The Wild Bunch. Diving into the music scene of London in the late 80s exposed Takazawa to the sort of electric style that incorporated a sense of personalization and individualism something that would root itself in an important concept behind the neighborhood brand that every piece has a story when he got back to tokyo takazawa started performing sets as a dj and working as a stylist eventually landing a gig with record label called major force for this job takazawa would go on tour with public enemy whenever they came to japan the job would also give him his first experience with project design for some of the label's merchandise, allowing him to learn about apparel design and business management. From London counterculture, Takazawa would move on to develop an interest in American counterculture too. Starting off by riding motorcycles with a friend who lived near a US military base, Takazawa would eventually begin with storing Kawasaki motorcycles and rode regularly. As for Harajuku though, Takazawa first visited in the early 80s, which was a formative time for Tokyo street scene. Back then, the area was going through a rapid period of cultural experimentation and evolution, with figures like Hiroshi Fujiara transplanting their experiences of London's punk and teddy boy culture, as well as New York's hip hop and b-boy scenes into their own home country. And by 1994, Takazawa and some motorcycle riding friends had started Neighborhood in an attempt to express a personal style that would break the mold of the traditional black t-shirt and leather pants that characterized motorcycle style at the time. Inspired by the idea of Harajuku area of Tokyo, which was their quote unquote neighborhood, they just decided to run with that as the brand name. Starting off with t-shirts and denim jackets, neighborhood began to develop an approach to distressing their pieces in order to achieve a more vintage aesthetic something that not many brands were doing at that time as their process continued to advance they began to produce jeans as well eventually becoming the brand's first collection series savage denim 
This was a special time. It was the closest thing that I could imagine. It must have been like before the days of mass global travel or communication. Trends, styles, and cultures of other countries were almost cordoned off. And like most non-American labels at the time, Neighborhood remained relatively unknown outside of Japan, save for the coveted expertise of the occasional visitor and streetwear-wise obsessive making their pilgrimage out east. Japanese have always had an obsession with American culture, dating way back to the 60s or so. And there was no difference with the ingredients that concocted the streetwear culture. The early success of Supreme, for example, is often attributed to Japanese fashion fans stumbling upon the store while on vacation and falling in love with the brand's brash, unapologetic skater aesthetic. Similarly, brands like Neighborhood owed their early small but meaningful status outside of Japan to a handful of travelers who began bringing magazines like Cool Trans back from their travels and shared them with their friends here in the States. Along with a handful of other brands like Undercover, Bait, WTAPS, and Good Enough, Neighborhood became established as one of the vanguard pioneer streetwear labels coming out of Japan. Distinguished from the Western counterparts by their superior quality, craftsmanship, and attention to detail. Over the brand's quarter century history, Neighborhood has become an undeniable behemoth of this Japanese streetwear scene. The key to longevity for the brand has been a quality that I personally have admired in a few other creators that we've covered. You see, Takazawa appears to have cultivated an ethos with his brand that is powered by more genuine passion for creative curiosity than dollars and cents. That's not to say that they haven't made money though and collaborated with tons of people. 2007 saw Neighborhood collaborate with Supreme for the first time, helping to solidify the brand's status as a heavyweight and premium streetwear, where it's basically remained ever since. Many Japanese fashion brands appear to operate more in terms of movements and eras. Exploring different cultural references and points of inspiration, experimenting with different graphics, touches, and design methods, which helps add to their different connection to the public. This has certainly been the case with Neighborhood, which has deviated from its original biker and rocker core over the years, all without ever completely losing itself. And in my opinion, it's this that's contributed to Neighborhood's longevity, cementing them in the OG category right along with all of the others. But what do you think? Are you a fan of Neighborhood? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know. Also, we hope you already liked the video for us. Liking and sharing each video helps the YouTube algorithms to pick us up and then suggest us to more people, which is the only way that we can continue to grow as a channel. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new episode, then hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. That way, you'll be dinged every time a new video drops. With that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out. Until next time, peace.